This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I add resolution to areas on a mesh without deforming other areas? So as an example, here I have the rifle model loaded in, and I want to add this ZBrush logo here to this part of the model right here. Now if I turn on my polyframes here and just isolate this section, you'll see that this area of the model was created with the Z Modeler brush and I have enough tessellation to hold the forms, but I don't have quite enough tessellation to hold that actual alpha. So if I try to draw this alpha on the model here, you're going to notice that it's just going to make a little bit of a mess and not give me the result I'm looking for. So to get enough resolution in this area, we're going to use a process of local subdivision. So to do this, first I want to come through and apply a different polygroup breakup to this panel here. So I'm going to turn off my dynamic subdivisions really quick. I'm going to switch to the Z modeler brush here. I'm just going to hold Alt. I'm going to highlight these faces here. And then I'm going to hold Spacebar. I'm going to select Polygroup. And I'm just going to click to give that area a new polygroup. Then I'm going to turn Dynamic back on so I get all those nice bevels I had set up. Then I'm going to go to the Geometry tab over here. And I'm going to open up the Dynamic Subdivision area and just click Apply. It's going to take those dynamic subdivisions that I had in the model and turn it to real geometry. So now that I have this as real geometry, I can now hold Control and Shift to select my Select Rectangle Brush and just simply click on that polygroup, and I'll just be left with this polygrouped area. So with this area visible, if I simply come through and just divide by either clicking on Divide over here, clicking Control D, you're going to notice that this area is going to be divided and then the rest of the mesh will stay the same. As you can see here, after that division, it has come through and generated triangles in the areas here to bridge the gaps between those two areas. So this process here, you can come through and isolate a polygroup like so, hit Control D to divide it, isolate again, Control D, isolate again, Control D, and you could divide your mesh like so in different areas on your model without affecting the other parts. As you can see here, since this is a hard surface model here, you cannot tell that that area has more subdivisions than the area surrounding it. Now, one thing with this here is you'll notice that my topology is uneven through this entire area. So this really isn't going to work too well for generating that alpha pattern on this mesh here. I really need some even topology through this area. So there are a few ways you can come through and generate an even area topology. The first one is now that we have this kind of divided up with a little bit of tessellation here, I can isolate this polygroup again and then locate the Z Remesher tab over here and simply run Z Remesher. So I can set this to say 15 points here. I can turn on freeze borders, which is going to hold that edge there that's making those connecting points to the rest of my model, and then simply click Z Remesher. After this process is finished, you'll notice that Z Remesher has generated an even topology across that entire area. So if I turn my polyframes off again, you can still not tell the difference in that geometry there. And now I have close to the amount of polygons I need. So if I switch back to my standard brush and try to draw out that ZBrush logo again, you'll see it's getting better. I almost have enough topology to fully draw or render that alpha out. And so now I can repeat the process of that local subdivisions again. So I can hold Control and Shift, isolate that polygroup, divide up. I'll see if that's enough tessellation. And there you go. So that is one way you can come through and, using local subdivisions, add topology to your model. So that was setting up a polygroup, dividing it up a few times until we had a little bit of resolution, then using Z Remesher to come through and even out the distribution of those polygons, and then local subdividing again to bring the resolution up some more to apply the alpha to that area. Now another option you can do inside of ZBrush here is you can use the process of mesh fusion. So I'm going to undo some of this here and get back to this version of the model right here. Now with mesh fusion, what you can do is you can come through and you can replace areas of your model with other insert mesh objects. So I have this polygroup here and I want to come through and apply more tessellation to this area. So I'm going to generate a quick insert mesh of a plain 3D object and then apply it to this area and it will come through and replace this polygroup with that insert mesh object. 
So to do this process, we first need to come over to our tool palette over here, and I'm just gonna select the plain 3D object, turn that to a poly mesh, and draw it out quick like so. So this is just a single-sided plain 3D object here that has been converted to a poly mesh. So I just need to turn this into an insert mesh. I'm gonna turn off perspective, and then go to the brush menu over here and do create insert mesh. And then I'm just gonna choose new. So now I have this square as an insert mesh object. So then return back to my rifle here, and I'm going to isolate that polygroup and just apply a mask to that area. Now the mesh fusion process will only work if you have no subdivisions on your model and you are not in DynaMesh mode. So if you have DynaMesh active, this process here is not going to work. So just make sure you have DynaMesh turned off before you do these steps. So I've masked that polygroup out. I have an insert mesh that is set up as that plain 3D object. And I just need to apply this plain 3D object to this masked area. So I'm gonna click on this area here and just drag this out like so. If your model vanishes while you're dragging that insert mesh out, just turn off solo over here and then come back in and drag that out. Now this is snapping to the surface of the object here. And since this is a hard surface model, it's snapping directly to the surface there. So I just wanna frame it something like so. And then I'm going to make it a little bit wider. So I'm gonna to go to the Move Transpose option here. I'm gonna click on one of these circles on the edges here, which will draw that transpose line out to a flat area. And then I'm gonna hold Shift and click on this outer circle here and just kind of scale that out so it fits that shape a little bit more. So something like that. And then I'm gonna switch back to the draw mode here. And I'm just going to do the same process that you do with a re-dynamesh. I'm gonna hold control and go to a blank area in my canvas, clear the mask, and then clear the mask again. Now, after that processes, you'll notice that the plain 3D insert mesh object there has now fused into the existing geometry on the model. Now, you'll notice that this has come through and applied this smoothing type effect to the area here. So since this is a hard surface model, if I turn off the polyframes here, you'll notice that it has changed that area on the mesh there. So this is happening because this SMT switch is on over here. So if I undo that process again, and then go back to the mask version here, turn off SMT, clear the mask, and then remask, you'll notice now that those borders have held harsh, and you'll see here that this area has had the mesh fusion process take place, and you cannot see the difference in the topology there. If I rotate around the model, you can see it's still looking very clean. Now, depending on how much resolution your insert mesh had, you may still need to come through and divide this up again. So you're just going to isolate that area there, and then do another divide as well. And this is going to be another local subdivision. So it's just going to tessellate that area there. And now I can come through with the standard brush and that alpha and draw that logo out on my model. So if you don't have enough resolution again, just do another isolated that poly group and divide, and there you have it. So those are two processes you can use. So the first way is using the local subdivisions with Z Remesher, and then the second way is using local subdivisions with the mesh fusion option. So if you have any additional questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.